Hello, listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Banquet Hall podcast. If this is your first time tapping in, make sure you follow the pod at Banquet Hall Pod. I'm lucky to be joined by an up and coming artist who has an EP dropping later this month. Deep Side, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great, man. Happy to be here. Shout out to all the people listening. Go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Add it to the playlist if you're already, you know, on another platform. You know, but I appreciate you for having me. Thank you so much. Got to put you on salary with that type of plug. <laughs> <laughs> also, follow me on the gram at Deepside999. But yeah, watch the full podcast before you leave. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And we'll make sure to we'll make sure to plug you all throughout the podcast. Uh, yeah, but usually yeah. how I've been usually how I've been getting these podcasts started on the front end is with a random icebreaker question. I've been doing a lot of movie themed ones lately, so I'm going to throw a movie question your way. So you are going on a date with a girl. You trying you trying to you trying to get with this girl. You got to show her a movie. Y'all going to the movies. What movie do you want to, well, not going to movies, but y'all sitting down and watching a movie, trying to get to know each other, trying to cuff this girl. What movie are you showing her? I just want like rom com. Like, like, like if I could get her, if I could get her on like a rom com, it's like, okay. Uh, you know, maybe she starts to like feel the guy and then she's like, oh my God, like this could be us. And then it's like, okay, now we're locked in. If not, if not a rom com, maybe like a scary movie, even though I'm not like a big fan of scary movies, I'd still be like, you know, she gets scared and then she like clings onto your arm or something. But Blast. I don't really, <laughs> I don't, I haven't been dating in a minute, bro. I've just been too locked in with music. <laughs> hey, we love to hear it. Got to be fully locked in. Do you have a favorite rom com by chance or do you have one that comes off the top of your head? Man, I like, I'm not like a big rom com guy, but like, you know, if I was trying to take a girl out, I'd probably take her to see a rom com. But uh, I watched that like Sydney Sweeney one. Uh, Anyone but you. Yeah, with uh, what's his name? Glenn Powell. Glenn, in there. Yeah, yeah, Glenn Powell. That was pretty dope. That was a good movie. I'll say that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that. That was that was a fun movie. Uh, but let's yeah. go ahead. Let's go ahead and get into the real the real deal. I know you're on limited time, so uh, Deep Side, where are you from, and how did that shape who you have become as a person so far? Yeah, so I'm from San Angelo, Texas. Uh, you know, I love my city. I think a lot of my city kind of like formed me in my early years, but uh, I was pretty much, you know, my dad was a single father, raised me by with my mom too. But, you know, my both of my parents were single parents, um, you know, and so like my dad was like probably like the best dad ever. Like he was very strict with me um, and he always pushed me to like think out side of my city because uh in my city like um uh, I don't want to say like it's super bad because I've been to like worse cities that you know what I mean I'm not like from the streets or anything like that and I don't like pretend to be um but you know my city had a lot of like negativity going on there so a lot of people get stuck there a lot of people you know what I mean they'll go and they'll work a job and they'll just get stuck there um or they get like pregnant by the time they're like 19 20 they get married you know and so like my dad's biggest thing was like he wanted me to leave and go out and do my do my own thing um so i, I want to say i want to say you know less of my city shaping me as much as i love my culture and it was more of like my my parents really pushing me to leave and you know work really hard i think i think i was very blessed to have like that mindset from my dad that was just like you know no matter what like you got to work hard and you got to be you got to be the best and my dad like every time i would start to you know mess up he would always be like why are you doing this like anytime i started to put on some weight even now even now he called me he called me last night and he was like yo why are you doing this and then he'll just ask me these questions and make me have like an existential crisis <laughs> um but like i want to say like the cities that really did shape me uh baltimore maryland uh i lived out there for about a year uh and that's when i really started learning about like the music industry how a lot of this stuff works uh, shout out to my guy Rome and Surreal Beats. Uh, Rome, actually, really good friend of mine. I still talk to him to this day. Uh, he owns a little studio out in Baltimore, but he also manages like a bunch of incredible artists out of that city. Uh, he's really well connected. Uh, so he was bringing me around all these different types of people. Um, and you know, when I was in Baltimore, that was when I was recording music. You know, for the first time in like a studio because I recorded in my room for about five years, mm-hmm. just just underground um 
you know, just just straight SoundCloud. When BandLab came out, I started mixing on on BandLab, and so like my city kind of gave me like this pop the pop the trunk mentality, and then mm. Baltimore kind of mixed that with like the industry. And then now I feel like being in San Diego, it's kind of like it's mostly the industry, and then I'm bringing you know the uniqueness of like you know the the mentality that would not really be from you know san diego just like the different kinds of music like the music in baltimore really kind of shaped my sound and then i mixed mm. it with you know all the stuff that i was doing back home so i think i think i have a unique voice given to me just from my experience because i can kind of do these different sounds that i don't think is very much uh prevalent you know on the on the west coast but i'm trying to take it you know global i love going to different places and, and learning the way they make music and trying to emulate that in my own music and just bringing everybody mm. together oh, i love that uh real quick for listeners who have never heard of san angelo texas where in texas is that so san angelo texas is in west texas so um we're not like super west like el paso is super west but uh, there's like a little mountain range that separates like El Paso, West Texas from like the rest of West Texas. So I'm on the other side uh, towards the towards the east. But we're still West Texas. Like uh, like there's a lot of like cowboy hats, uh, like rancheros, like like like, you know, like the people with cowboy hats and, and stuff like that. And then we have like, you know, cholos and shit. Um, but like we're a couple hours away from Dallas and San Antonio. Uh, it's like three hours to the next major city, no matter where you go. Um, but uh, you know, I love it, man. Uh, the people are the people are super friendly. Like I'm from the south, so you know the southern hospitality is like really big thing. When I when I left, it's kind of weird because it's like uh, I still have the southern hospitality, and so like um, like not everybody has it, you know. It, but I like San Diego because people are friendly, but they're friendly in a different way than they would be mm. where I'm from. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's a good, you know, it's a good city and I, I love, I love like expanding and learning new things. Um, so I, I wouldn't change where I'm from at all. Like I, I'm really proud of it, you know? And I think, you know, as, as, as different as like my city is, cause it's a little bit smaller town, like mentality, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a city of like a hundred thousand people, but you know, it's still like a lot of people who've been there for a long time will still consider it to be like a, like a town. You know what I mean? So it's like, so like, it's kind of like that kind of mentality, like, a, like really old school. So I, like, I think I'm a lot more like old school with like certain things, but you know, it's, it's a great city. I have a question for you. Cause you're young. What's, what's old school to you? <laughs> like I'm a lot more traditional than okay. like, I guess, than like, I guess like a lot of like rappers or like, you know what I mean? People, people out in California would be like, uh, you know, like like one of the things I noticed in San Diego that is kind of like not it, I'll just say it's kind of weird to me, but it's not because of like I'm hating. It's just weird. Like uh, like the hookup kind of culture. Mm. Like that's that's really weird to me because that's not really like a thing in my where I'm from. Like so like uh, like trying to date out here, it's kind of like weird because like uh, like the girls, you know, they're used to guys who are just kind of like just trying to like have sex and leave. So, and then like, there's just some, there's like little things that are just, that are just different. Like, uh, like Texas is also like really kind of like, uh, and I'm not, I'm not political, but um, like, I, it's a lot more like a conservative, like state. Um, and then coming out to California, it's a lot more like liberal, which is totally cool. Like, like I said, I don't care about politics, but like, it's funny to see like, cause it's like, it's like they almost mirror each other. Because like mm. people over there will like really stand on what they believe, but people over here will really stand at what they believe, but it'd be like the complete opposite, you know, beliefs. So it's like it's like some of the things that they're just slightly different, but like like I said, like I love, you know, both cities and I just want to bring people together. Hey, I definitely hear that. What brought you yeah. out to California? So I I took a job out here. Um I'm a i I'm a professional photographer for my day job. I do videography. And I'm a social media manager. Um, specifically, I'm in the military, but I don't really want to get on that too much. But that's that's kind of what allows me to travel. Um, I joined because my my dad was really pushing me to join, uh, mm-hmm. like at first, it, or at least weigh out my options. Because um, I had a I had a girlfriend in high school, and like 
I kind of dropped a lot of stuff that I had going on. Like I could have gone to college and stuff like I had really good grades, but me and her got like super close. And so I started deciding like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, just move in with her. And then me and her broke up and I was like, okay, I'm just going to move to like San Antonio on my own and try to do this music thing. And my dad was like, well, before you do that, like weigh out your options. Uh, I had a buddy in the Navy talk to him and he was like, Oh, well, you know, I, and he was a rapper. So like, obviously I wanted to get his opinion. So like, he was like, Oh, like I live in Spain. Like I go to France, um, England, Sweden. Uh, his name's ICV. He's a, he's an incredible artist, an incredible person. Uh, and so I, I started weighing it out, picked the Navy as a, as a way to kind of like elevate. Uh, and so I, I, my line of thinking behind it was, you know, I might not want to do, you know, the full career, but I could use it for the travel opportunities to kind of like network and meet different people in the industry, which is something that I have like done. And I want to say I've done it very well because it, it took me to, you know, Baltimore, Maryland, like nobody would ever just go to Baltimore, Maryland and try to like learn what they do. And that's why I think it's kind of given me like an edge. Same thing with San Diego, California, you know what I mean? Like, so, so I think moving forward, like in the future, like I'm going to try to go overseas learn how, how to do how they do it overseas and then bring it back here and then try to, you know, really lock in with the music. And, you know, I, I like, I, I always told myself, like, I don't need to be, you know what I mean? Like super famous and, you know, like these four, five years of uh, me just doing this job and, and working, but I do want to start building up like that core audience and really just kind of like bring that unity so that whenever it is time to really like blow up, I can really have like that infrastructure of, in that core you know following in that that community and I, I and like I'm more big on the impact also which is why like I don't really like to do things that are kind of like I guess I guess pointless so yeah I, I'm going a little bit off off I'm on not, the tangent, this is a podcast yeah. <laughs> this, is what's, this is what this is for <laughs> yeah to, to answer your question that's, that's what uh let me leave <laughs> oh yeah i mean hey don't be afraid to go on tangents that's that's what podcasts are for the people are here to to hear your story um, i got you <laughs> let's get started you mentioned that you started recording songs in your room on soundcloud when people ask like how you get started how did you get started with music what origin story do you tell them man it, it goes back like because because music has always been like kind of like the soundtrack to my life so mm -hmm. You know, for me, like, I just love, I just love making music. I, I've been obsessed with, you know what I mean, making music since I was, you know, like 12. But I, even then I could think back, you know what I mean? When I was in like third grade, uh, there was these two girls who would, who wanted to sing and I was kind of like shy. So I would just like write them songs, like, and then make them sing them. And then we would film like little like music videos. Like we were like kids though um you know and then my mom had like a laptop whenever I was a kid like five years old four years old and I used to just get on there and just like you know what I mean try to make like little songs or I'd go I would go outside and I'd sit on the porch and I'd just like try to like come up with some melodies you know at the time and it was just like you know kid doing kid things uh and then I got into content creation for a little bit uh, I really liked like phase clan and like call of duty streamers so I used to just like try to hit like uh like clips, um. But that led me to doing like reaction videos to at the time musically was a thing, and I was in like seventh grade, so musically was a thing, and so I started making like reaction videos to kids at my school's musicallys, and they were always like super bad, uh. And so um, my teacher played one of my videos in class, and like everybody thought it was like hilarious. But then I got into beef with this uh, with this kid. And so I wrote like a diss track for the YouTube channel. And that was that was like the first rap I ever like wrote. And it was really, really like bad. And like I, <laughs> I deleted it. Uh, and then, um, you know, I, I started to really get into like, I want to say like Kendrick Lamar to pimp a butterfly uh, and like Eminem. Like, I, like at first I really started with like the lyrical rap, like like the new the new age lyrical rap i wasn't really well versed on like the old school stuff so i like kendrick i liked you know what i mean j cole eminem like at the time it was like i want to say like 2017 2018 mm -hmm. and i was like i was in like eighth grade um 
So Ouch. I started, I, yeah. <laughs> you was in eighth grade in 2017, 2018? I think so. I think I think so. Ah, I think so. Man. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm only 20. I was born in 2003. <laughs> Ooh, we might have to end the podcast. I graduated yeah. <laughs> college in 2017. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. The, and then X came out, uh, XXX Tentacion, and that dude just really like shattered like my, um, I guess like my perception of like what a hip hop artist could be, because like I liked that he did other genres and stuff, but it, I wasn't tripping that he did other genres because there's been other artists to do multiple genres. But I just really loved the way that he kind of looked like a like a superhero almost. Like he he was just so bold, you know. To me, at a it, it, still looking back like i think he's dope like you know what i mean i know his mom and like yeah but that kind of became the dude that kind of just like inspired me to rap and then you know what i mean but different you know family things you know my mom went through a divorce and it was kind of like rough i started to really like lean on music like especially like eighth grade you know ninth grade uh freshman year just really making music and i i didn't take it seriously because i didn't have the like i didn't want to show people how seriously i took it because I didn't have the confidence in myself to like make the songs that I felt like making, um, you know, so I was making, I was making stuff on iMovie on my phone. Uh, you know what I mean? Now the kids, like now they have like band lab, they could throw auto tune on there and stuff. But I used to just do like the voiceover feature and I would just like screen record a beat and just like rap over it. And I did that for like two years or not like a year and a half. And then uh, my dad found my raps one day Cause he, he used to go through my phone just to make sure I wasn't doing anything like bad. Uh, and he, he found my, he found my raps and he was like, he was like half proud, but like kind of disappointed. Cause I was cursing all the time. And he was like, you know what I mean? Like you catch your son, like writing like raps and they're a little bit profane. And he's like, bro, like you're educated. Like, like he always, he, he called me yesterday and he was like, cause sometimes like I, I'll talk like ignorant and he's like, man, like, you you can't you can't be talking like that like you're educated so he he tried to push me so he he's like look I'll, I'll buy you a microphone and like i'll help you do this music thing but you can't curse in your in your rap so like a lot of my early stuff like instead of saying fuck i'm saying like heck like <laughs> it's shit like that um but you know it was, it was good i think i think he was like kind of like protecting me and, and pushing me to kind of like i guess grow, grow with my music so it was it was it was cool man and then you know, when I turned 18, I was like, I'm I'm going to start cursing my music. I'm going to start just making the music that I want to make. And so that's kind of how I got into this uh, this thing where I was making like SoundCloud-esque songs. But I was just putting them on Spotify. Like, I, like I've never really been big on like SoundCloud. I had one song kind of do numbers when I was like 17. But like by the time I was 18, I was just really tapped in with the community of like plug and be type of type of artist. Um, I had a good friend named Evan Allo. Uh, he still makes music, but he was kind of like, I was looking at him a lot as like, okay, this dude is like what an independent artist should be. Like he had a lot of streams, like he still does. Like his graphic designs were always on point. So I was just trying to like learn, you know, from as much artists as I could, you know, before. And I had a lot of different like eras and working with a lot of different artists in that time. And then when I, when I left, you know, I came, I came back to music because I, I had to stop making music for about like three, four months. Um, so when I came back to music, I was just a completely like different person. So that's kind of when I started over and started to write kind of not not yet, but I started to go back to my old sound. And then my my homie TK passed away. And then it kind of just like, you know, I almost quit music because it was just like that just sucked. You know what I mean? And we had a lot of like plans. Uh, so like I almost quit music and then I, I came back because when I moved to San Diego, I found an open mic and that's how I met Curtis um, and this guy named Chris and Chris is like a super great guy too. Um, and that's when I started to get back into music, but I was trying to relearn the fundamentals because I was teaching myself how to rap again. So like I went back to this boom bap sound and that's whenever I don't I don't know if you were there when I went to Black Expressions the first time but I started off with like these like could I make you mine could I make you mine and then mm -hmm. trying to re yeah I was trying to relearn how to do hip hop and how to work a crowd again cuz it just I just been so rusty and I didn't really understand like how to how to rap anymore and like it felt like I had lost my connection to that spirit and then when I when I got bored of that sound is whenever I think I started to bring 
create the sound that I have now where it was just like, okay, I started looking at like Drake, you know what I mean? These bigger, these bigger hits. I'm like, what makes these hits? Like, cause I'm, I'm just getting to the point where I'm just really tired of not, you know, being successful. And it's like, I feel it's that. like bro, like, like, like I, I'm just really tired of just like, you know what I mean? Not having like the success or like the money to do, to do what I want. And, you know, having to having to worry. So that's when I was like, okay, look, let me look at these hits. Let me figure out how to make a hit. You know what I mean? So that's just what I've been locked in on now, just trying to make these like hit songs. Like, you know, there's certain things that I there's certain things that I say in the music sometimes that I I don't want to say like aren't true because I don't like they're genuine to how I feel. But you know what I mean? Like if I say something like, you know what I mean, a little bit mm. like edgy, like you know what I mean? It, it's it's not because I'm trying to like pretend to be something I'm not, but I'm just saying just whatever comes to mind. Like, like music is like a flow state and it's just a straight emotion. You have the spirit that kind of comes down and just, you know what I mean? It kind of guides you through the process. So for me, like I've always been really good at like preserving that. So, you know what I mean? It, it's funny sometimes when I see like reactions from people who don't really get the music, you know what I mean? They're like, Oh, like you trying to be like, something that you're not I'm like nah bro like I just felt that way when I was making the song and I just put it in the song and you know we let the song rock the song can speak for itself and if you don't like it like get fucked I don't know <laughs> like I don't know what to tell you it's hip-hop like <laughs> like you know uh I rock with that um yeah I think that's a beautiful way to just frame your craft and like letting music guide you leaning on music during those tough times I uh, definitely want to take a pause to uh, dedicate this episode to your friend TK like I know that when you lose like people close to you like that can really take a toll on somebody and especially as an artist I can only imagine like what might have been going through your head at that time and having to take a break away from music when music is something that can really fuel you through some of those times as well yeah it was crazy man like um because because tk he he wasn't just like an artist like he was also like a promoter he owned his own record label he he knew how to make merch like he knew a lot of things about the industry and about being an independent artist you know and and when i when i met him i i've talked about this before but when i when i met him it was like a confirmation like from god like just like you know you're meant to you're meant to do this like he put me on my first show for free he helped me make my first merch. You know, he he was explaining things that I didn't understand. He he sh he got on the radio in my city. And mind you, I'm like 18 at the time. Like yeah. he just came, I just came out of high school. Like I like I'm still a kid. You know what I mean? So he shouted me out on the radio in my city, and, and so all these different things. It was just like, like you know, it was like the first time I ever really felt like validated in my in my love for music and just believing mm -hmm. in myself. You know what I mean? So for him, for me, like, I think he meant just kind of like, you know, he was, he was a good friend. Like I would still call him. And like if I needed like actual business advice about the industry, like he was always there to kind of talk to. So when he passed, it was kind of just like, I lost like my, like my mentor in the, in the music. Like, you know, I still had my dad, like I still had like, you know what I mean? People looking out for me and stuff, but like somebody who was like in doing what I wanted to do, like it was like I lost that connection mm. and you know what I mean and I was also going through some other things too um and it just kind of like helped me like lose my connection to the music I guess like I was still talented like I was making my my stuff but like my old sound is a lot different than my new sound because it was just like a lot of like you know got it out the mud like me just rapping just trying to like prove myself with the raps instead of trying to make songs uh, and that was because I was around a bunch of guys like, you know, TK just trying to impress them. Uh, and then me and him had talked about, you know what I mean? Maybe going on tour and stuff whenever I could, you know, get through my training and shit and like doing more shows wherever I was at and making vi music videos and, you know, all these different types of things. So it's like when he passed, it was kind of like, damn, like, like I had to take a step back. And then I realized like uh, if I don't make music, you know what I mean? He didn't have like the best relationships with everybody in his crew. Uh, like everybody, like there was a bunch of people in his camp that kind of like switched up on him and, you know, maybe he switched up on them and I, I'm not really sure. Um, but I know when, before he passed, like he had kind of gone through this thing where like a lot of his relationships with his friends or weren't like close anymore. Uh, so, but I always rocked with him because he put me on like, 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not going to just like turn my back on this dude. So, you know, I, I would talk to him and, you know, when, when he passed, it was like, okay, well, if I quit making music, like who's going to tell the story, you know what I mean? And what's crazy is like, like I still talk to, I talk to his family every now and then, but like, what's crazy, I think is, and I think it's a good thing, I guess is like, like, you know what I mean? we wouldn't be talking about him if I didn't make music and I hadn't met mm. you, you know what I mean? Like, and that's kind of the thing. Like if I stopped doing this all together, like nobody would be there to like tell the story. So that was like, mm. like when I moved to San Diego, that's when I started ho- hitting open mics again. Like my first performance in San Diego, I just dedicated it to him, bro. And I just like, it, like I almost felt like super overwhelmed with like emotion after I was, after I was done. Like, you know what I mean? Like I started, you know, get the little crocodile tears, you know, because it's just like we just came so far and we still got so much further to go. It's like, damn, like we need to, you know, I got this thing and I'm just trying to just push myself, you know, and it's like, you know, that, preserving that legacy is just super important. No, absolutely. And I appreciate yeah. you being transparent and just sharing more about your relationship with TK. I uh, definitely know that he's probably looking down proud of just how you've grown as an artist. Uh, you're on your second podcast and not that long of a time. Uh, being yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Shout out to TK for sure. Hey, well, thank Thank you, man. I appreciate you. And I appreciate, you know, you asking me about him. Like, I, I love talking about him. Like, that was my homie, man. So, and thank you for having me on the podcast, too. Like, <laughs> yeah, of yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Curtis earlier. Some listeners have already listened to Curtis's episode on the Banquet Hall. And you're one of the artists that he shouted out. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember the first Black Expression when I met Curtis and Evan. You all mentioned that uh, you had this group chat when you like shout out, like, oh, I'm going to this open mic. Y'all should pull up. And then y'all came through the Black Expression, all three. Y'all was rocking the mic. Uh, do you remember? Well, you brought up one of your first times performing at Black Express. Do you remember when we first crossed paths at Black Expression? I don't remember when me and you specifically crossed paths at Black Expressions. Um, but I do, I do remember. You know, I mean, getting there the first time and I did I came out with my could I make you mine song and I was about 20 pounds heavier and like 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 I had my glasses on. I think I wore flip flops like I was not because I, I was like I was like I was like, yo, it's San Diego. Like it's the beach. Like, let me just wear flip flops like they, that just goes to show where I'm from because you know what I mean? Like my dad and stuff like we would just wear flip flops if we're going to like the river or something like. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I thought that shit was cool and then I get there and it's just like everybody's looking at me and, and Black Expression was a little bit more intimidating because it's like uh, like I want to make some dope shit like this this is where the, all the like rappers and stuff are like in, in like the poetry and stuff so I'm like bro like let me not fuck up like when I'm when I'm doing these songs because I'm like I'm like everybody's looking at me you know what I mean like let me let me lock in so I did my I did my first song, uh, and that's when I met like GJ, uh, and like I really respect that guy. We kind of have like the same path almost. We went to the same school, except he was in the army and I was in the navy. Uh, you know, I met I met you. I was DJ. Like uh, it, at the time I was going, it was the it was the girl. I don't remember the, her name off the top of my head, um, but she was super she was super friendly. Uh, Lola, Lola, yeah, Lola was hosting it at the time. Uh, and then I came back and I did like a really hype performance because I, I was still trying to test the waters, you know, because because eventually like when I'm performing like at my own shows, I want to bring back like this hype type of like Travis Scott kind of energy where you're just jumping in the crowd, like doing all types of crazy shit. So I, but I brought I, I've done that style of performing before. And so I brought that shit to Black Expressions and it was just like like it was so intense that I don't think it was like rocked with. And then. I went to Baltimore and I, I started locking in a little bit more. And then when I came back to Black Expressions for the first time after being back from Baltimore, that's when I brought Evan and I brought Curtis. Because I already knew about Black Expressions. Like, I'd been there yeah. before. Like, you know what I mean? So it was their first times. And I was like, bro, y'all got to come with me to this. Like, you know, this is this is one of the only open mics in San Diego. It's like, not to diss the other open mics in San Diego's, but, like, this is the, this is one of the only ones, you know what I mean, where it's like – poetry and rap like is like the primary thing if you do some other shit like you're kind of the outlier where it's like san diego hip-hop scene it's like it's very small and like also like at these open mics like most of the time it's like singer songwriters you know i mean which is not a bad thing like i love like i said i love 
like I love everybody's music, but like I'm hip hop, bro. Like, like, so when I, when I go to these places, I'm like, let me, let me just do something in my, in my genre of people that are going to actually like what I like. You know what I mean? And so with Curtis and Evan, like me and Curtis have been down with each other since I got out here. Like I met Curtis at my first open mic and like bro is an incredible artist and also just an incredible person and an incredible mm-hmm. friend. Uh, I, I talked to him last night. We had like a like an hour and a half long conversation about just different business ideas. And you know what I mean? Me and him, like sometimes we compete, but he's my brother. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, 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 I think I think we push each other. Like, and that's what I really like love about Curtis, like because because he's super real. And I think we have this kind of relationship where we can be like very honest with each other. Like so like sometimes like like there's been times in the past where I've pissed him off because I was. I maybe said something that I shouldn't have said, like, or like I'm giving too much of my opinion. And so like with him, like, like he's, he comes from a different like environment, like he's from Jersey. So it's like, mm-hmm. I, there's certain ways that like, you know, if I, if I, he, he's just real big on respect in the same way I am. So it's like, it's like, I think we both really respect each other and you know what I mean? It, it's great that we can, you know what I mean? Put all of our, you know, differences aside, like, like no matter what, like, and we can work together as a team so that we have the same like goal and the same and the same vision and we play different roles. Like, you know, he's better at like promoting events and coming up with getting people together. And I think I'm good at like marketing and like doing more business stuff. And we're both like dope artists, you know, Evan is an incredible artist too. And he, he knows about like different opportunities that like, neither one of us would know about because me and him are a little bit more like uh, like like i guess not underground but like we kind of go through our like different channels evan will be on like some random youtube channel with like three hundred thousand subscribers like he's just on the voice like randomly so like him he's he's an incredible like person to have around and like he's so passionate about what he does too you know Mm -hmm. what i mean that's what that's what i love about our crew man like like we we're all very passionate about the music and we and we can we realize that like coming together is more valuable than than staying apart because we could all just continue to do our own thing and it's like that's great like maybe we could see success from that like I know I'd be successful no matter what and I'm sure Curtis and Evan will tell you the same thing they don't need we don't need each other to have success but we realize we can be more successful by coming together and lifting mm-hmm. each other up and just being positive and so like our group chat like of of course we share open mics but we also share different opportunities in there you know we share information with each other like if i know something about i'm very good at getting streams like like in and you know what i mean getting my music played by other people so you know sometimes like one of them might ask me like I had a conversation with uh, with Curtis. He's like, he's like, real bro, like, how do I get more sh- like streams? And I broke down, you know what I mean, like my Spotify strategy, yeah, my YouTube strategy, how I, how I get X amount of views, how I run X amount of ads, and, and to get the type of engagement, you know what I mean. And and he can break down like, okay, like this person has a podcast over here, like let me do this, and you know, we all kind of help each other with information, and we all also have uh, other artists in our group chat too that don't really come out to the open mics with us but they're also like they ha- they have different opportunities and they help too so uh, we have uh we have red and red is our like he's a photographer so like if we need like a photography shoot done mm-hmm. like we'll just hit him up and he'll take he'll take photos for us uh and then we have jay scott jay scott is really tapped in uh with like you know the kids and he's also you know what I mean? Super invaluable for like studio connections and stuff. I I actually just met him like recently. I've only I've only hung out with him like once or twice. Uh, but like he he and Curtis like actually work with each other, and he's a super dope artist too. And he mm. has a different sound. Like I think we all kind of have different sounds, but we can all kind of come together. And then we have Mylon the Prairies, and Mylon the Prairies is like man, that guy is incredible, bro. Like I see him, he goes up to LA all the time. Uh, and he's he's super connected. That's how I got on Underground Magazine, just through him. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and seeing him grow has been like super awesome. He's from Sacramento, great guy. Uh, and then Chris, Chris, uh, Chris will come out to like different 
shoots and stuff. He's he's kind of locked in with basketball right now, but he's also he's also made like some incredible music. So I'm very blessed to you know to have these amazing guys around me, and I and we hope that you know we can inspire other people to come together, especially in San Diego, man. Like a lot of, well, I and to me, I'm an outsider looking in. So correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've seen in San Diego, like there's not a lot of togetherness in the mm. in in the in this kind of community. Like you have the Black Expressions crew, which is like really locked in and dope. Uh, and then you have like us, and then you have like a bunch of these bigger rappers who always like leave. It, it, what all the locals will say is like they'll leave and go to another city, like they'll go up to LA and then they'll be like, fuck San Diego, like, or they'll just kind of turn their back on everybody. Yeah. And so, but it's like I feel like San Diego still has like a lot of great music and a lot of great like sound and like everything to where it's like if you brought everybody together, you know what I mean. The the city could have like another like come up, you know, and then yeah. you get some legendary rappers from from the city. So, yeah, I definitely think that prior to the pandemic, there was a lot more togetherness in San Diego. But I definitely have heard a lot more. Uh, over the last few years about people feeling like it's more disjointed and everybody's kind of out on their own. Uh, and it's funny you talk about like people saying F San Diego moving to LA because what did I do? Say F San Diego, I'm moving back <laughs> home to LA. But this is my hometown, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but I am happy that you gave us that deep dive into y'all's group chat and the importance of like that togetherness for your craft because I think we as a society need to see more of that. I think especially uh, with the IG real TikTok 90 second video generation, uh, everybody's just on a go, 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 let me get mine. But it really does take like togetherness. It takes community to, to really be able uh, to grow as a unit, which is why I'm ecstatic that I have you on a podcast today, recording with Evan tomorrow, already had Curtis on the podcast and just bringing everything together. And that leads to a very special segment. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah. Like, I was just going to just agree with you, man. Like, I'm super grateful that you're, you know, not only giving me the opportunity or giving Curtis the opportunity, but you're able to sit down and talk talk with all of us, man. Like, we re- we really appreciate you. And, like, we, we've we spoken very highly of you, like, in our in our own community. You know, and we're like, oh, man, like, Kyler, he's he's a great guy. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, watching watching your interview, like, you know, like, you 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 actually give people a platform, I guess, to, like, speak their mind and not not with like judgment or anything and also you're mad funny bro like when you host events and stuff i was like i was laughing my ass off at that event bro so you know what i mean like i said like i keep saying you know thank you for the opportunity but you know what I mean? thank you for the opportunity like i'm glad that you're you know highlighting all of us man it's it, we need more people like you who aren't afraid to just sit down and have you know conversations with people and you know let give them give them a voice you know so I, I really appreciate it, bro. I definitely appreciate and receive that affirmation. And yeah, that night that y'all was at Black Expression, I was a host. And I do feel like that was probably my best night ever hosting. So y'all kind of caught lightning in the bottle too, because I, I don't Hell know, yeah. I just had the joke. I had the jokes ready that night. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> but no, thank you for real. Uh, but I wanted to transition us to a very special question corner because prior to uh, this prior to schedule or right after I scheduled these interviews with you and Evan, I reached out to Curtis for questions that he wanted to ask y'all on the podcast. So I have a couple questions directly from Curtis uh, yeah. that I'm ask you and I'm asked Evan uh, just to get some of the group chat vibes in here. So uh, the first one that Curtis threw out, if you lost all of your musical and creative talents, what else would you be pursuing in life? Content. <laughs> content i don't know that's all i know how to do man that's all i'm good at i i don't like <laughs> like like I, what do you want me to say like like man curtis you told me about this bro you told me that you asked me questions you should have prepared me bro yeah like i don't i'm not very good at a lot of things bro like i'm good at making music and i'm good at making content bro like I know, and I just know how to bring people together. I'm a leader, it's, so it's like it's like I would be I would be leading something, you know. What I mean, and, or I would just disappear into I don't even know. Like I would just I would probably be making content, like, like making YouTube videos and stuff, and then trying to learn how to do music, like, <laughs> like just trying to get the talents back. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be in there training like Rocky, just with the microphone, just like, uh, like no voice, no style, no nothing. 
Hey, that, that kind of make a dope movie. It's kind of like Space Jam before a rapper. Yeah, <laughs> bro, that kind of would be. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> hey, but it, life is about figuring out what you're good at. So you're young, so you still got plenty. It's I, like when I was 20, I had no idea what I was about to be doing. I didn't know what job yeah. I was about to have. I definitely wouldn't have thought I'd be a, a podcaster. So uh, plenty of time, plenty of time. Uh, the next question you had, if you had to relocate to any other state to do your music, which state would you choose? And I'm going to throw in, it can't be Texas or Maryland. Oh, probably uh, probably Florida. Florida or New York. Uh, mind you, I love California. Um, I thought moving to Atlanta would be cool. Uh, you know, I love a lot of Atlanta rappers. It's like, like I want to say, like, that's the place to go if you want to come up in hip hop. But I just love like the sound in New York and Florida mm. for different reasons. I like I like New York because it's one, it's like historically the hip hop capital of the world. Like like that's where like a lot of the like California too. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to diss California. I know you wear the Lakers jersey on, but you know what I mean. I do want to say like <laughs> New York is kind of like where hip hop like started. So like for me, like I always wanted to go to New York. I never got a chance to actually travel up there even when I lived in Baltimore because I was just so busy on the weekends that I could have gone up there and I didn't have any opportunities so I can't justify I couldn't justify traveling up there without any opportunities mm. but um yeah New York I think that would be super cool to just go and see all the history and then work with like the rappers up there now like there's a lot of like drill rappers that I really like up there um you know and and I think New York is a really great place to go if you're trying to get like press like, mm. cause that's where all the, you know, media capitals of the world are. You, you could live in New York and get on BT, you know, like everything that you need in New York. It's like California. It's like LA almost like you don't have to leave LA to, to get these opportunities. You just gotta work hard and meet the right people. But in Florida, um, I think Florida is a really dope state for like artistry. Like, uh, like Florida has like his now, it, now it does has like a historical like kind of track record of like it kind of established you know this new era of music like like a lot of the foundations of like what like the soundcloud rap space has like become is kind of like inspired by florida also like i heard miami is like super beautiful and like fun and there's a lot of opportunities like i have some friends who are from florida and Everybody always speaks super highly of Florida, but it's also, it doesn't seem like it's so, like, overly, what's the word, expensive. Mm -hmm. Also, like, maybe in Miami, but, like, not all of Florida. Like, I thought about maybe going to college out there in a couple years. Um, but then, like, can it just be states or can it be, like, other countries? Uh, let's open it up. Let's, what other countries are you trying to go to? I would love to go to... Um, like mexico and make some like uh like that peso pluma shit like like do some do some different type of music man like 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 i said like i want to be a global artist but i also want to make music that like the rest of the world can like vibe with so like i thought it would be really cool to go to mexico and make some like you know what i mean like reggaeton like like do that kind of shit go to brazil do some like brazilian funk bring it up to spain uh i thought going to like the uk and doing some like uk drill raps like that would be really cool. Like, I, I would love the opportunity to do that. Uh, go, of course, go to like Amsterdam and make some like house music mixed with like some hip hop, like get that get that taste all together. Um, I think it'd be cool to work with some like K-pop artists. Uh, like, like I listen to a lot of different music and uh, also like I really want to go to like South Africa and make mm. like some Afro beats kind of like dance hall type of music like with like that Burna Boy shit. But also like, like Tyler, like like I love I, I like love Tyler's music. Like like I don't I don't like I I'm really like love hip hop, but like I like other genres of music too. And like that's that's one of the things that I haven't really showcased yet because I'm trying to get my respect as like a rapper and like as a like as an artist. But like when I think when I get established, like I'm gonna really kind of go crazy and going into these different genres, but not trying to like not trying to like appropriate them. Like I like how I feel like you know, different artists try to, like, appropriate genres of music like that. Like, how a lot of people are leaving hip-hop and pop to go to country. Like, like, and that's a good way to describe it, but it's happened to hip-hop, too, where, like, people would just switch. Like, when hip-hop started to come up, people just started to just switch over to hip-hop, like, jump ship from whatever genre they were in 
and trying to ride the wave of hip hop. I feel like that's what a lot of people are doing with country now. Like, I'm not trying to like appropriate no genres, but like, I want to actually like learn how they do it and just make like really cool music. Like, that's mm. you know what I mean. So that's yeah. like, I guess that's like what, what my dream is. Like, like I want to make music that like the whole world can like love. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And I definitely appreciate you bringing up the appropriation aspect of it because that was going to be one of my next questions, just understanding all the different cultures that go into the music that you're interested in, understanding the history of hip hop and rap, like mm. being able to respect the genre, respect the people that came before you, respect the culture, I think is so important. I wish more people would voice that as well. Yeah, well, because a lot of people... It's all about your intentions, I, I want to say. Like, you know what I mean? It would be disingenuous for me to make a country song when I don't like country music. Like, not saying I hate, like, not trying to hate on it. It's just not really my cup of tea. In the same way, you know what I mean? Like, hip hop isn't everybody's cup of tea, also. So it's like, I don't want to like rip from any genres, but like, there are things that I would just love to learn. Like, I've made some acoustic songs that like I, I'm not going to put out yet uh but like and i've done it in the past where i've just made some acoustic stuff just because i like that kind of like indie that indie sound um but i would love to go to like africa and make some type of like you know what i mean like dance hall project and i think i think the the main thing also is kind of like contributing to that community also mm -hmm. like i would i wouldn't want to just like steal their sound and then run off with it and then just like okay now i'm making a bunch of money and i'm not like paying respects like not nah, like I would want to get songs with like, you know, the people who are actually popping in those areas. Like, like, you know, what I think of like the UK and stuff, like I would want songs with like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like on Central C, um, Skepa, like, like those type, those type of artists, um, you know, and, and just trying to like learn as much as I can, like going to Mexico, making songs with like actual like Mexican, like, like artists like that would just be so cool to me because then it's like okay then it's like a global type of thing and it can have like a global impact and you know historically like you know there's a lot of different political things that happen with a lot of the music like like the music is kind of a reflection of each of the times mm -hmm. like and, and, and you know like hip-hop i understand the history behind hip-hop like hip-hop hip-hop has always been the voice of the people in my opinion like, you know what I mean? Hip hop has always been that kind of genre that kind of spoke out against like oppression and, you know what I mean? Different things. And I understand like the history behind like, like hip hop and how, you know, they burned, you know, Black Wall Street, like Harlem, like the, all these different types of things and all and all the struggles. And, and I, I do my best to like learn about it as best as I can and, and speak with people like you and, you know, Black Expressions crew, like just trying to like learn. And, and like understand like the kind of struggles you know what I mean because I like last thing I would ever want to do is like be harmful to the genre you know what I mean but like I love it and I'm gonna make what I want to make because that's just that's just the spirit of, of the of the culture too like you know what I mean you can't just block me from the from the culture just because you don't like the way I look like that's fucked up like like and also like to even go deeper on that like I'm really anti like like racism but also just like race as a classification of people like like in my opinion we shouldn't be calling people like you know what i mean like by their race like calling you black you know what i mean like or calling calling me white or calling anybody like their their race i think we should just be one people and like you know what i mean if somebody has a culture and they're proud of it like that's great like you know what i mean but why do you have to put that on like a job application or put that, you know what I mean? Like put that on like different things. I I just think it's kind of like almost uh, archaic. Archaic mm. is a great word. Like, and it's also like, historically, it's never done anything positive for anyone. You know what I mean? It, it, it makes people who aren't superior feel like they have like, you know, some type of like superior thing and it, it just suppresses other people. And it's like, there's already, you know, economic oppression happening in the world where, you know, you have these rich elites, you know what I mean? Just destroying countries and destroying economies. And, you know, you go to the inner city in LA or, you know, Baltimore, all these different cities, you go to the inner city and all these people are struggling. People are struggling everywhere in America. And it's like, the last thing we need is more division. You know what I mean? So in music is, you know, I look at people like, uh, like Bob Marley, like his music brought people together. 
And like, I would want my music to kind of bring people together too. Like, you know, just give, give something to people that could just be like a soundtrack and, you know, music sometimes is, is a great way to have like an emotion, like, and you can, you can feed that emotion and, and it can comfort you uh, in, in a way that like not a lot of things can like, you know, it, music is, music is like reassuring, you know? And I think, I think, I think music has been historically, especially, you know what I mean? For, um, like oppressed groups of people that like something that has been the only outlet. And that's why I think like so many like hip hop artists are so dope because like they have actual, like had struggles, you know what I mean? And, you know, for me, it's like just trying to shed light on that, but also look to the future and think of like, how are we going to continue to like grow as a society and how are we going to improve our communities without trying to just push people out? Like, you know what I mean? Like, how are we going to actually like uplift, uplift everybody? Like, and that's, that's something that's always been kind of like important to me. Yeah. Um, you made a lot of great points in what you said. I wish that we had the time to unpack this racial, the social constructs of race in an American society and the history of all of that in this podcast, but I'm gonna let people do their own digging and research uh, to learn more about race as a social construct and the history of all these different isms and colorblindness etc 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 um yeah. but i do just yeah like i said i do just appreciate you bringing up that aspect of your craft as like a person with your identities of course because uh, i know people would look at me sideways if i had a non-black rapper on a podcast and we didn't even talk about like the culture of hip-hop the culture of like rap and whatnot so definitely appreciate you bringing that up I think it's a I think it's an important conversation that everybody should be having, not just, you know what I mean? Like and maybe I gotta be like the first person who looks like me to have this conversation, but it's also like it's also like like it's kind of stupid. Like and it's it's pointless because it's like it's like, okay, you're gonna, you know what I mean, hate on somebody just cause just because of their skin color. There's there are a thousand other things you can hate on that person for. Like, like just cause how they look, it, it's just so it's to me it just doesn't really make sense and maybe that's just the way my mom raised me my mom was really big on like just loving everybody like no matter like what they are like you know if they're gay like my mom had a lot of gay friends growing up like so I never really understood it but like I would see people around me like especially in my city like you know I've like I, like I've seen people actually like kind of like be racist like I've seen people be like homophobic and you know I think I think God you know what I mean is love you know what I mean so like so like and when there's less God in the world, like there's less love in the world. And so like having, having this conversation, you know what I mean? Maybe this doesn't do anything, but like, maybe it sparks another conversation with another, you know what I mean? More pe people. And then, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know, 50 years from now when we have kids and our kids grow up, maybe race is just not something that's talked about. Maybe it's just something that we move on from. But I think, I think, you know what I mean? demonizing people instead of trying to like educate people is also like just as harmful as like like them you know what i mean being like racist like like so like if, like every time like i've i've encountered that on on both sides because it happens on both sides because of historical you know what i mean like conflict it's like it's it's important to have that conversation and then just find find ways to solve that problem and, and move forward and put more love out into the world. Like, and I love, mm -hmm. I love hearing, I love hearing stories about um, like people who have been able to like overcome those barriers and just, you know what I mean? Not, not like hinder it, you know, like, and I think, I think when you shut down the minds instead of trying to like help them, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, you, know? you gotta have you gotta have more conversations <laughs> for sure uh yeah definitely would look forward to having more of a conversation on this topic with you offline but i want to make sure that we get through the last few questions we have oh uh, yeah because yeah, i know sure. yeah, i know you have i know you have a music video to get to so i don't want to make you late <laughs> because we unpacking the history of systemic racism and whatnot on this podcast yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta teach me more about it because cause I want to learn more. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of one of the things that I've heard at Black Expressions that I like to talk. Like I like to I like, like to hear about it and understand like the things so that we can move forward from it as a society. You know what I mean? Like, 
Because I, I just think it's kind of fucked up. Like, like, like you know? <laughs> yeah, more more conversations to come. Maybe we'll yeah. have, like, a full <laughs> roundtable conversation on a podcast. Uh, but just a few more cool. questions. It would be cool. <laughs> just a few more <laughs> questions true. I wanted to make sure that we get to, though. Uh, first yeah. and foremost, what's the story behind Deep Side as your, as your name? So there was a guy I went to school with. Uh, he was, like, a fake gangbanger, and he went by D Street. Um, and I've told, I've told the story before, but I'll, I'll just kind of like give the short version. So he, he went by D street. Um, we were like best friends at the time. Now I don't fuck with them. But like, uh, like I said, when I started rapping, I wanted, I took music really seriously, but I didn't have the confidence to like, take it, like be serious about it. So I just, I was like, Oh, I'm gonna start off as D sidewalk. Uh, and I did like meme rap. And then I, changed it to D side because I was wanted to be taken a little bit more seriously. I got a little bit more confident in myself. Uh, but the way I spelled D side was DSX D three and nobody knew like what that was. Like people, people would hear my song and be like, Oh, this song is dope. And then they would just would like never listen to my music again. Cause they didn't remember my name. So I sat down with Evan Allo and we had this conversation and he was like, well, I think your biggest problem is that nobody can remember your name. It's too complex. Mm-hmm. So I changed it. I changed it to D side, just D S I D E. But then I looked and there was another D side and I was like, ah, I'm not about to compete with compete with that. Like we got my own name and XS X and Like he had this clip where he's like deep side bitch. And like, he really kind of was able to, what's the word? Kind of like gave me like this idea. I was like, okay, deep side, like that's kind of, and then, it, and then, you know, I put a dollar sign on it. Like I was writing it down. The the lowercase I was like something that distro kid was like tripping on, but like I'm starting to like it because it kind of looks like an upside down exclamation point. Mm. But but like I, I didn't want it there originally. Uh but you know it, it it's worked out and I, I really like I really like Deep Side. I think it kind of you know the, the the difference between like me, like my name is Christian and like Deep Side is a little bit different. Like I feel like I feel like Deep Side is a little bit more. You know what I mean? Bold and kind of like just able to speak his mind and just a lot more confident, you know, creative. And I feel like me as a me as an actual person, like Christian is more like just like I'm very like caring and like I just care about like I just care about people. And I just want everybody to, you know, have a positive experience. But deep side is more just me just kind of like speaking my mind. Like I'm not afraid to get like negative being deep side. Like I can I could put all my negativity into this music and, and instead of doing something that. You know what I mean? That would be harmful to other people. I could just put it in the music, let the music, let the music rock. And then, you know, if people, if people relate to it, cool. If they don't like, it is what it is that I've still said what I said and I'm going to stand on what I say, no matter what. Hey, I I love that. I always love a good uh, name origin story. Uh, Just because I feel like when it comes to artists and creatives, uh, people have their Instagram handles, they have their titles, and we don't ever really get to hear the stories behind those. So I always like to ask artists a little bit about the story behind their name. Uh, oh, where yeah. can people find you on line and how can people support you? So they can find me on Instagram at deepside999. That's like my main push. That's like my main page. So that's what I'm most active on. So if you want to send me a message or something, maybe do a podcast or we can network, do some music, like hit me up on instagram at deep side 99 um but my music it can be found on all streaming platforms with deep side with a dollar sign um yeah like you know what i mean I, i'm not hard to find man <laughs> <laughs> you know deep side 99 on instagram the 999 uh i put that in there like this pay respect to like juice world when he passed Mm. you know what i mean i was like because i was doing my instagram and i was like oh deep side is taken and i was like oh we'll just go past like let me put the let me put the 999 in there so and then you can buy my merch at deepside999.com you know we got we, oh can i can i do a merch breakdown right quick go for it so um my merch right everybody keeps asking me about it and i just want to give clarification so my merch at deepside999.com so the front of the front of the shirts and the hoodies and the and the long sleeve shirts uh, a lot of it was kind of like, I was like, okay, how can I find like a creative way to give the fans, you know, something that they can kind of like wear and be a part of the movement, right? So I have Deep Side on the front, like it's a like normal shirt, 
But then I'm like, on the back of it, I decided to put a QR code on the back. So, and, and some people have been kind of hating on it and being like, oh, like, you know, maybe it's this. But like, I, like, hear me out. The, the QR code is a link to all my music. So if you go and buy merch, you obviously support me. So let's take that support a step further. Let's make a movement. You know what I mean? If we if we want to push unity and music and just spreading love, like, you know, if you buy the merch, you know what I mean? You got that QR code in the back, people go scan it. Maybe they, they find this podcast and then we you, we could spark these conversations, you know what I mean, to bring people together. So so the hoodies, it's like, one, it's like a fashion, like marketing innovation, you know what I mean? It's like something that it's tying in, you know, fashion and clothes, something that can be like a, representation of like expression and with you know what i mean marketing and this movement that we got going on with the music and everything like that uh and you know i i got i got this idea you know what i mean just looking at like the way like kanye west does clothes or yay like i, I was like i was like okay like how does he do clothes and, and i'm sitting here i'm like how do I, I how can i do something that's gonna be different than all the other merch because everybody has merch but nobody has stuff that like will link you back to the artist and, mm. and really put you on like you wear one of these shirts you really support me like and you support our, and you support what we got going on unity the music you you support you know what i mean love and love with all people you know what i mean and that's kind of how it is man so i just i just wanted to talk about that right quick too cuz i, I got to plug the merch oh <laughs> uh, yeah of course um, I did just look at the deep side 999.com and it is a big ass QR code. I'm not going to lie, but yeah. I, I love the idea of it. I think I'll start to get annoyed if I see too many people taking pictures of me trying to scan the QR code, but <laughs> I, I, I would be able to ignore it. That's just the introverted side of me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to start getting mine. I'm going to start doing a, uh, a modeling campaign pretty soon. I just got to get the, La 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 la. Wait till I get my money right. Like <laughs> hey, we we all trying to get our money right for sure. <laughs> hey, but like that, like I said, Vin, like like that's one of those shirts where it's like you wear that and you're making a statement. It's not something mm. that you can just passively wear. And I think I think that's what I want people to understand about my merch. It's not. It's an exclamation point. It's not just some type of normal thing where you just throw on a shirt and like okay, like this is my shirt, like. Now nah, we're gonna take it a step further. You, you you wear this shirt, you're making a statement that you you know you believe in unity, you believe in you know spreading love to all people and just music and you, you support like what we're got going on. If you're, if you're buying merch from me, you're already a fan. So it's mm -hmm. like let's just let's just make that an exclamation point, you know? Absolutely. And if I could share one marketing pet peeve I have, just to words from the wise, just make sure that QR uh -huh. code always working because if I buy that shirt and scan the QR that code, QR and it code ain't work, working. Oh yeah, I check it every week, bro. <laughs> good. good. Because some people they we live in this QR code time and they don't be updating the QR code. So I scan the QR code and it don't work. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> so so the way the what I have the QR code linked to right now is my link tree. So gotcha. it'll take you, it'll take you straight to my link tree. So if I ever have to update it, I'll just update my link tree. So it's like, and so it's constantly updating every time I drop like a new song. Like, like I'll just change it. Like I have my link tree kind of very simplified. It says merch, new song, new music video, uh, YouTube, Instagram, boom, locked in. I might add like some other stuff on there, but it's like we have the the merch. Like you go buy the merch, you're like, oh shit, that's a cool ass shirt. Boom, I'm gonna go buy it. If not, like, oh, what's the Instagram? Boom, take you to my Instagram. Oh, new song, cool. Now we're always locked in. But I verify that QR code is like all the time. <laughs> good, good. And, and I'll be expecting after Monday when this comes out, one of those links better be to the Banco Hall podcast featuring Deep Side. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. I would definitely put that in there, man. And then, you know me, I'm going to a little bit of ads to get this shit oh, yeah. jumping, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Uh, we're down to our last couple of questions. First and foremost, you have an EP coming out later this month. Wanted to give you an opportunity to shout that out so people can be on a lookout for that. Yeah, so uh, the EP is called Text. It's a, a collab collaboration between me and my good friend, Vice Trini. He's actually a high school student in Baltimore. Um, he kind of came up in a rougher environment. So when I was in Baltimore, I used to just take him to the studio with me. And that's kind of how we made these songs. It's a lot of, it's very fun uh, project. I'm kind of dissing this guy who's, who scammed me out of $500 on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. His name is Jay Grams. I told a story like already. So I'll, I'll let, I won't 
waste too much time telling the story, but he scammed me out of five hundred dollars. So I kind of like dissed him on the record a little bit. So you know what I mean. But it's a, it's a very fun record. It's one of those things where it's kind of like I was just letting how I feel kind of sit in the music, and so like you know I was like like at the time like I was very upset and I was very like angry and like I felt kind of like aggressive. But instead of trying to like lash out, I was like let me just put it back in the music. So that's when I was talking like talking a little bit crazy, but like I'm still out of like the project. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm not trying to like be no street artist or anything but like it's it's more of that kind of like sound just trying to you know put all my aggression into the songs and you know just letting that rock and then of course you know vice trini he's super talented like young young guy man like 15 16 mm. like super young but like a very talented guy um and he makes music like you know for me when i, I see people like that you know they're like when I was that age, I didn't have nobody really helping me out with music. You know what I mean? Nobody wanted to take me into the studio or like, you know what I mean? Like my dad bought me a microphone, so I can't say nobody helped me out. But like, you know what I mean? The world wasn't yeah, really trying to help me do this. So, you know what I mean? When I see these kids trying to grind, man, I really try to help them. Like he's not the only kid that I've done stuff like that for, but he is like the kid that I like in Baltimore. Like he's like my main, my main man. That's like, he just is incredible so i just wanted to take the time you know what i mean not just not just highlight everything that i got going on with my first project like i'm like let me highlight my homie before i start dropping my own mm. my own bigger projects you know what i mean and also just kind of give him like that kind of treatment and just show i wanted to show like a lot of these kids like what's possible you know if you really just work hard and just like stay focused on this music like you can really achieve a lot and so like uh you know the youth is very very, it's very important to me. So it's like, let me let me find ways to help the youth. And so I think I think you can't just say that and then not like contribute to what they got going on too. So it's like, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe it does something, maybe it doesn't. But you know what I mean? I, I know that he really likes the songs and like I, I'm very proud of the songs and all the work that we did. I think I got him to do some different things. And, you know, I, I, think, I think the whole EP is going to be crazy. So I'm excited to see the reaction from it. Hopefully it's positive. But if it's not like, Hey, notes hey, for growth. <laughs> hey, but it's a good, it's a good project. The, the, don't let me. I'm not trying to sound defeated, but like at the same time, like if you don't like my music, like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that's that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> hey, as it as it should be. Um, I feel like there comes a point in every podcast where I gotta like be the surrogate to the audience because I know some old heads listen to this podcast. You talking about helping the youth? They're like, man, you are the youth. <laughs> I am the youth. But I'm the but I'm I, the voice I'm the voice of the youth, bro. Like that's the thing. Like I'm the old <laughs> to them. I'm the oldest one. I'm yeah, like I'm that. like I'm like their big brother. I'm their advocate because I could I could actually tell you what's happening with the youth, and I could be like, okay, this is this is actually what's popping in the youth. But then I could speak to the old heads too. Like I know my hip hop history, man. Like I like <laughs> like I've gone back. Like you know what I mean. I like it. N.W.A. Man, like Grandmaster Flash, like Rakim, like. I've gone I've gone back like big L like I like I know I know my history too like like I've I've been studying man and every time I don't know something like I love to get educated so like if people feel like I'm being ignorant like y'all could just tell me but like I want to be the voice of the youth you know what I mean like just speaking to what the kids actually like you know and, hey, and putting them on putting them on like like how my role models did you know I saw them do for you know the kids in their circle I was like let me let me just give back you know what I mean and you know, I, I care more about if the kids fuck with me than if the old heads fuck with me, like with all with all respect. Yeah, like, absolutely. With all with all respect. But like if the kids care about me, the kids is going is going like always rock with me. Then they're going to grow up. You know what I mean? Maybe I set the example and then they start to help the kids in the future. And now we have this movement of just like, you know, what I mean, like because the old heads already set in their ways. You know what I mean? So it's like we get to the kids before they before they grow. You know what I mean? Maybe this conversation that we're having about like race not being a thing you know what i mean maybe this doesn't affect change in our circle or you know what i mean the older people's circle but the kids watching it's like yeah that makes sense i'm gonna stop you know identifying people by race like it's stupid you know what i mean and then maybe you know what i mean things happen and we move forward and it's something that's just like archaic and of the past that's that's what i'm really hoping that this conversation you know does and just preaching unity you know, there's too much division in the world, especially after COVID, man. Everybody's on their phones and stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of mind games that everybody tries to play. They try to manipulate the youth and guide them to negativity and push them into like, oh, like 
not thinking for themselves. So like I want I want you know my fans to like I guess I want everybody who is a fan of me to have a better life because they're a fan of me. Not mm-hmm. the not the not the other way around. You know what I mean? Music is music on one thing, but like feel I say how I feel on music and feelings aren't always like kind. But me as a person, like I want, you know, these kids to look at me and be like, yo, like I actually really like what he's saying. And, you know, maybe that inspires them to go out and chase their dreams. Hey. Well, I am rooting for you, Deep Side. And I, as you were speaking about the kids, I pulled up the uh, analytics for the podcast and, because I wanted to fact check myself. There, mm-hmm. Of all of the listeners, the only demographic I don't get listeners in is the kids. I, nobody listens to this podcast at zero to 17. So you're going to change that. It's going to change, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to change. That's great. But the last, the <laughs> last, the last question of the podcast uh, is just takeaways from this episode. What are you taking away with you from this episode? And then I'll give uh, what I'm hoping to take away from this episode. Man, what I'm taking away from this episode is absolute positivity, man. You've been a great host, and I genuinely appreciate the opportunity to come on your platform and you know you giving me a voice like that, like uh, like, and I really respect it and I really appreciate it. You know, um, I think we had a really good conversation about unity and. And different things kind of telling my story a little bit but also like you know i love i love to flesh out that conversation that we were having prior a little bit more uh the, you know I, I i'm very interested to hear what you have to say in response to that um because i don't want to sound i don't ever want to seem ignorant to people's struggles or anything like that so if you feel like i, I would maybe i said something that was ignorant just let me know and like like i said like I, i'm all about growth and learning and trying to just improve for the next generation so I, I'm very I'm very happy with this conversation and everything that we've been able to accomplish. I think I think this com- this podcast might be able to spark a conversation or just spark ideas in different people's heads. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe not tomorrow when it comes maybe not when it comes out, but you know, whenever it does come out, you know what I mean? Maybe five years from now somebody watches this and they're like, Oh, yeah. this is really great, it's really great ideas. And we just continue to move forward and progress. And that's what it's all about. So I'm I'm really happy with this podcast and I'm really thankful that you were able to have me on. Oh yeah. Thankful for you trusting the platform to come on in to tell your story. Um, I think my takeaway is similar or related, at least I should say. I definitely appreciate all of the dialogue that we had. Uh, it was a very well-reaching dialogue. Uh, we got to talk about your music and talk about more of your worldviews. I love what you mentioned about like wanting to bring the world together through music and being a global artist. I think that's beautiful. Um, And I think that the biggest thing that I'm taking away from this episode is just the importance of podcasting as a platform too, just because Mm -hmm. this is hour and almost a half content of us talking, you sharing your story. Uh, There's going to be stuff that you said that people really rock with. There might be things that you said that people disagree with, but what I appreciate about podcasts is that at least if someone disagrees with anything you said, they heard it within the context of what you wanted to say, because I'm not the podcast that's going to put like a five second snippet. Oh, deep side said this, like, what are your thoughts? Like, no, like I want people to be able to listen, to engage and hear everything you said, because like you mentioned, it's coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of unity. And I don't, at least running through my producer brain, I don't think you said anything that's like, oh, this controversial take that I'm ashamed that you said. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also just, one of the things that I really want to keep true to this podcast is it's about telling your story and uh, you having opportunity to share your upbringing, your artistry, which you're most passionate about, uh, which is why I said I wanted to have like some of the additional conversations offline, but just to give you like a preview of those thoughts, like, I definitely think that, uh, not think, like definitely knowing that like race being a social construct and there's a lot of harm that comes with identifying people by specific races and stuffing people in these different categories. I think the one thing that you said that I had to think a little bit more about was with regards to like getting, not getting rid of race whatsoever. That's not what you said, but I'm gonna always be like super pro black. Like being black is yeah. definitely a big part of my identity. And it's a big part of a lot of people who have been on this podcast. So I don't think that I would ever want to necessarily say that I don't want people to see me as black, but I want to get rid of the systems that challenge people based off of the races that they are, or the identities that they hold. Yeah, and that's more what I was trying to say. Like, I'm not trying to take away, like, somebody, different people are proud of different things, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, 
like I'm proud of who I am, but like I never really like I guess saw myself as like super like pro white, like not trying to yeah. like did put hate on like those type of people or like dissociate with them, like you know. I, like, I'm gonna just put it out there. I, I don't want you to be super pro white on this podcast. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not pro white. Like, but it, I'm not anti. I'm just pro people and pro yeah. love and pro and pro God. Uh, but like, I think I think that like people are just people and i think we should respect everyone and somebody's proud of what they're where they come from or you know what i mean i'm proud of being from texas you know what i mean people people i know who are super like mexican like they're proud of their culture and everything that they've been able to accomplish and so i think i think we everybody should respect people's cultures and being proud but i don't think because somebody comes from a certain background that they should you know what i mean be like ostracized or like mistreated or treated or treated differently just because you know what I mean like like I've I've been treated differently because of how I look and it's not it doesn't feel good you know what I mean and so like I and I know you probably had the same experience same experience so it's just like I hate I hate that we have like this especially in this country because I think we've made a lot of progress but I think there's a lot more to be made um that people are just like anti anti one group of people like you know and, and it's like I think having the conversation and building a bridge and being able to be like, okay, like you come from this culture and you're proud of this, but also like I'm from this culture and I'm proud of this, but like, why do we got to hate each other? You know what I mean? Like, why can't we just, why can't we just respect that? This is what you, this is who you are and this is who I am. But like, I still respect you as a, as a person and like, you know, just putting that love out into the world. And that's always been, you know, that's that that is what I hope people take away from this kind of conversation. Like, like I'm not pro one race. I'm pro everybody just being the best them that they can be. Like I said, like and like I said, I don't want anybody who's a fan of me to be a hateful person towards any group of people. You, you know what I mean? So that's why I think it's very important for my music to, you know what I mean? Like I said, it's not always positive, but it's, yeah. you know, it's 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 how I feel. But I think me as a person, like I want people to just kind of and I understand that like like I'm not I'm not like pro like division. I'm I'm about yeah. unity and I'm about I'm and I'm about love, you know. So it's like with And I the, think that came out really well throughout this episode. I think everything that you've talked about, all the stories you've shared, I can tell that love is at the center of everything you do. And I as the host of this podcast, I really just have appreciated getting to know you deeper in this way. This is why this is why we podcast. <laughs> I love this podcast, man. Like this has been a really great podcast because it's not, it's not theatrical. Like it's like an intelligent conversation. And I think, I think we both like pretty much agree on like the same things from my understanding. Like we agree that, you know what I mean? Cause I'm not trying to take away like you're, like you're proud of being black and I really respect that. And I think that you should be free to be proud of that. And nobody should give you shit for that. You know what I mean? And I think I think it's the same thing for all groups of people, man. And so I, I'm really I'm really happy that we have this that you have this platform and that you allowed me to be a guest on, you know, for for podcasting and we can have these type types of conversations because I I really think these these types of conversations are what change the world. Absolutely. Couldn't have stated it better. Uh, Deep Side, you've been so gracious with your time. Like I said, I really enjoyed uh, having this conversation. Listeners, I hope y'all got a lot out of this conversation as well. Uh, if this is your first time tuning into the Banquet Hall, make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, if you're on YouTube, leave comments. If you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a five-star rating for the five-star content that you receive. And most importantly, uh, one, share this episode with somebody who you think can benefit from this conversation. Two, check out Deep Side's music. Check him out at Deep Side 999. And three, even if you just came to hear what Deep Side had to say, go ahead and check out another episode while you're here. Check out Curtis's yeah. episode. Check out Curtis's episode. <laughs> then check out Evan's episode. We're locked in. Subscribe yeah, to we... Banquet Hall. <laughs> Add it to your playlist. Share Add it. it to the playlist. Share lock it. In. <laughs> lock, lock in. We need y'all to lock in <laughs> as much as we've locked in. But thank y'all for listening to this episode. And we will catch y'all on the flip side. Or we'll catch y'all on the deep side. How about that? We'll catch you on the fucking deep side. <laughs> <laughs>